Hi, everyone. My name is Jay Gignac, uh, and I'm here today to talk about simplifying OT cybersecurity for manufacturing. Um, so one of the things that's gradually changed over the years has been the risk profile as well as the perfect storm that's kind of led us to a point where manufacturing environments have become prime target for ransomware attack as other threat actors as well. And I want to explain a little bit, set the stage as to how we got here and uh, considerations to discuss around novel approaches or foundational things that we can start doing to try to get back control of the environment. Let's talk a little bit about the current situation. So we've lived through digital transformation, really not overnight, uh, but it has built up to a point where we have hyper-connectedness in our environments, IoT device, IIoT devices. Um, we've seen the assets that we've always had in our environments, um, 20 years, 30 years, grow and evolve. Wi-Fi connectivity, bridge networks across uh, different assets that live in the operational environment. And that's brought a lot of productivity gains. Unfortunately, it has also brought a lot of risks. The way that we've architected and built our operational environments um, were not built in a way to address future risk. And, and this has brought us to a point where we see now regularly ransomware attack, threat actors leveraging these gaps um, in hygiene that we have in our environments, as well as accelerating along the new ingress and connectivity that we've brought at the plant level, factory, or even multi-site um, circumstances. So let's talk about who's really interested in leveraging these environments. So first and foremost, it's a business ecosystem. Ransomware, as well as other uh, threat actors have really turned themselves into a commercial venture. Um, they have their own ecosystem. They have their own organizational structure. They have customer service. They have partner support. They have uh, development and tech ops. These are businesses that are focused on taking advantage of the gaps, um, as well as limitations covered by compliance in order to grow their business at the expense of the organizations that we're discussing today. And certainly manufacturing hasn't been the only target, uh, but there is, there is lack of compliance and lack of regulation that surrounds manufacturing, uh, especially in North America, that's made it a prime target to be leveraged. So what are they doing? They're providing free tools. Um, you can self-teach yourself how to leverage our environments. Uh, there is a great number of resources in order to educate yourself to become uh, a malicious actor in this domain. There's very few risks. You can cross borders. You can walk, uh, you can walk yourself across the globe uh, with a few key, uh, key presses. So, so really, we're dealing with a global threat landscape where your neighbor is just as much of a risk as uh, someone that you'll never encounter that's halfway across the planet. So the democratization of cybercrime really has uh, moved forward in leaps and bounds. The automation of tools, uh, the ability to set crawlers to work and find targets. Um, there's a lot of open source tools that can be leveraged to identify um, threat vectors, uh, surface of attack, and so on that can be leveraged uh, very easily. So the consequences certainly don't match um, the risk to the organization. And um, I think that it's, it's clear now that with the difficulty of attribution, as well as the ability to hide ransoms inside cryptocurrency, it makes it even harder to reverse these transactions, to track them, uh, or even bring them to justice. Uh, so we have to understand that we've set ourselves up for these circumstances in, in many respects. Um, all, all is not lost. There are many things that we can do, especially making ourselves less attractive uh, for malicious actors. All right, so let's talk about a little bit of the differences. So operational environments really care about uptime, safety. Those are the primary drivers to maintaining the environment, to keep it productive, uh, to keep the revenue flowing. Uh, as with many organizations, this is where the value creation is done for the business. Contrary to IT, if something goes wrong in OT, there are multiple consequences that can occur from loss of life 
to financial damages, to supply chain disruption, and so on and so on. And, and certainly OT cares about integrity of processes, uh, IP and so on, uh, intellectual property, uh, but it's mostly concerned with keeping the integrity and the reliability of the environment continuing. So we often talk about operational resilience management we want to make sure the business continues. Now, this used to be um, according to different types of risks, and certainly security was a concern, uh, but now security is occupying the main stage uh, in its ability to really disrupt and leverage unknown attack vectors as we lack visibility to protect our environments properly. Three foundational myths typically exist in this space. We are air-gapped. Um, unfortunately, this is no longer the truth. There is hyper-connectedness in our environment. Uh, IT typically has access to anywhere between 50% to 80% of the OT environment for legitimate reasons, but reasons that unfortunately have grown with time and you end up having multiple accesses into the environment. There are service providers, there's maintenance, uh, there's support, and all these um, use cases are legitimate to maintain the business. Unfortunately, when you allow another actor or another entity to enter into your environment and you trust them with direct access, you are basically giving them the keys to enter your environment. And you accept the risk of them and their own posture being added to your risk profile. This is not an easy process to <coughs> accept um, and zero trust certainly has been uh, capturing a lot of, of the mind share here, and there's very good reasons for this, and I'll refer to a couple, a couple of resources down further below in the presentation. So, so what's the other uh, foundational myth? Uh, OT protocols are obscure, right? So obscurity, uh, security by obscurity. We, we've heard this one before. I am not uh, subject to being attacked because my environment is on either archaic or complex or poorly known, therefore threat actors won't attack me. The unfortunate truth is, is that even though some OT protocols are more obscure or less understood, the pieces on which they run, the assets on which they communicate to and from, often include components which are open source. Typically, they contain some vulnerabilities, sometimes multiple, and even the transport layer or the protocols that might be used are sometimes completely um, vulnerable, like SMBV1, which is very widely used, Unfortunately, this is a, a problem, right? So this is again debunked. This myth uh, uh, really is a myth. It doesn't exist. So uh, access to the environment is no longer a problem. Leveraging what you know is no longer a problem. And, and we find that this has uh, reflected the number of events that we've seen. Now, the last point, which is probably the most important one, is the hygiene aspect. So if you're unable to audit your perimeter, you have no idea who's entering or exiting your environment. You don't know what they're doing there, uh, and you have poor visibility on your assets, as well as having a gap between IT and OT, typically born out of uh, lack of cooperation or coverage. IT uh, does not handle OT because it's out of scope. There's a CISO that newly owns the responsibility. There's a million cultural stories there um, as to how uh, OT risk has not been managed through time very effectively, certainly not as well as IT risk has. And that's, this has led to poor hygiene between the environments, which is really a shame because 90% of all successful attacks against OT typically will go through IT. And, and most companies do not have effective policies in place uh, between IT and OT. So this really contributes greatly to uh, the foundational hygiene, which is lacking um, between those environments. So the good news is there are resources out there and there's always good places to start. So, so let's accept as part of the challenge of securing OT that most organizations are at the beginning stages of taking control of it. This means either being at the asset inventory stage, trying to gain visibility into the environment, to having engaged with some vendors, maybe even having made a per first purchase in some OT-centric security solutions, um, and trying to get control of what is happening, either from a communication layer or from an, an asset profile, vulnerabilities, and so on. Um, the second aspect is that because there are no effective policies in place, there are bound to be many hygiene issues. And although many of the solutions currently existing are good at detecting things once they happen, 
They're not very helpful at determining things like segmentation plan, uh, policy coverage, uh, misconfiguration in the firewalls. And it doesn't really help us address the wider risk. It does inform us as to when we are compromised. Coming back to that in a couple of minutes. Uh, the other aspect is that most of the OT attacks leverage IT. So again, playing to that comment about hygiene, this is an issue because they are using the easiest path to access the environment. You don't need to dress somebody up, put a hard hat on and send them for social engineering attacks against the plan. Although that is certainly a risk in itself and there are scenarios to handle that, uh, really it is much easier for cyber actors to just leverage the easy access to the environment and bypass the controls, do the poor, um, poor visibility, uh, poor policies, poor processes that would have been play, put in place that would really address the new risk profile uh, of the organization. So, so where do we begin is often something that we hear. Um, we often hear people evaluating themselves along maturity or capabilities. What can I do? Do I have to staff additionally? Do I have to source a provider? All of these are good questions, and we're going to revisit maybe some of the core, core things we should be questioning about the organization. We also hear a lot about which framework I should adopt, and certainly there's some verticalization here. Obviously, utilities will measure themselves differently. They are subject to different regulation, but manufacturing does not have very strong compliance in place. There is no external stimuli to match a norm. Um, they are loosely um, uh, entertained uh, compared to some other industries. Uh, however, NIST is very useful in creating, as with many others, but NIST is especially complete, uh, addressing the risk profile, the methodology, the types of assets, remote connectivity, and so on. And so in order to be able to measure yourself in order of um, quantifying the progress or the gaps and vulnerabilities, it is important that we establish some sort of metering system in order to know where we lie and where we need to progress and identify critical areas that need to be covered, including the crown jewels that we have internally. So there, there's a number of things and resources that are available, free publications to be consumed that would inform on proper way to handle circumstances, break it down, break it apart, focus on the things that are important to you, but do try to establish the fact that you should not be trusting others within your environments. This is opening the door clearly to having threat actors come in uh, or leverage other entities that have access to your environment and therefore get exploited through a third party compromise. This is what supply chain is all about. And we often hear about how supply chain is important. Who owns the risk is extremely important in this discussion. If you are accepting connectivity from a third party or from a trusted partner, but they have poor hygiene or controls themselves, then it exposes you in turn. And compromise in the cyberscape is very quick. Uh, and fortunately, it can propagate and paralyze your operations very quickly. Visibility remains the first step because visibility will inform the rest of um, the risk areas or the risk controls that you're gonna have to put in place. Um, it all starts with identify. If you look at NIST, identify, protect, uh, detect, respond, and recover uh, is a self-sustaining system of continuously improving your posture. The identify component is particularly um, important because if you do not see something or you do not have awareness of a risk um, or a, an event, you have no ability to mitigate it or to address it anywhere else uh, during that, that, uh, that process. We have done a fairly good, fairly good job over the years to be reactive. We have been taught to deploy reactive solutions that inform us when there's IOCs, when there's compromise. Unfortunately, in OT, once you are compromised, it's already too late. So the goal is to move the line of acceptable risk back towards predictive and proactive rather than uh, accepting that it is okay to have IOCs and to react to circumstances as they occur. So what happens is that once we have a compromise or an IOC, something is wrong, something is being leveraged, ransomware might be propagated and so on and so on. This leads to operational cost as well as recovery cost and potentially damages or loss of life. 
unfortunately, in OT environments, if there's a severe event, um, it can lead to consequences that could be very damaging. So accepting this dynamic of reactivity to what can happen to the environment used to be limited by tools uh, and would require a very high spend in terms of internal audit, manual process, throwing bodies at the problem, if you will. This is no longer the case. Uh, there are tools like ours that allow for proactively identify risk and exposure in your environment so that you don't have to live through the average event lasting a little over two weeks that's costing your business or your operations tremendous, of, tremendous amounts of financial damages or potentially more serious consequences. Typically, we've been... Um, told that it is important to detect at the layer three of the Purdue model and below. Uh, for non-Purdue centric individuals, the Purdue model classifies as assets in regards to their role within the operational environment. Process at the very bottom, so IOs, um, sensors, actuators, boilers, different things that would live in the environment and actually do something physical. So this is where you have the cyber kinetic components. And then above those, we'll have the managing layers and the interface layers, um, as well as the distribution layers that allow to manage and operate this environment. This is what has been in the market for years now. And there are actually tools today that allow you to look at everything that you have, including the IT environment, to properly mobilize, mobilize your investment and leverage what you've spent in order to inform um, the defense of your OT environment with your whole network architecture. So the firewalls can feed information, your switches, if, you, if you've adopted an SD-1 type of setup, all those components will feed um, and provide intelligence on how to properly monitor uh, and, and prevent those attacks by identifying the risks and providing what we call indicators of exposure. So we're not focused on compromise, but rather focused on the exposures ahead of time in order to limit the impact and prevent them from becoming uh, compromised downstream. So the key thing here is that you wanna have something that allows you to contextualize the risk for your entire organization, because each of these components have a role to play in the journey in securing OT. And if you're able to identify these, IOs, the, these IOEs, the indicators of exposure, you're able to focus on the things that will allow you to multiply your gains in terms of effectiveness and have the ability not only to deal with the wider set of compromises, so you're moving your visibility higher to your architecture, therefore you're able to see not only more compromised elements, capture them, remedy, remedy them, and move forward, but also seeing the exposures themselves before they need to be um, addressed as a reactive uh, action, but rather more as a proactive mitigation action in order to close and reduce the surface of attack. What does that look like? You should be, within a few weeks, able to have immediate visibility into your environment. This is what these technologies do now. They give you the ability not only to compare to a compliance or governance or framework model that you would have adopted, but you're able to properly identify which assets are at risk. Are they critical assets into your environment? Do these 20% of my assets produce 80% of my revenue? Making that association and that risk impact should be at your fingertips. You should not have to go through seven dashboards, three different service providers, and different consultants to be able to tell you what is going on within your environment. These tools are available. So why continue working in the way that we did a decade ago in order to remediate things manually with poor, uh, poor understanding of how OT and IT can work together to secure your converged environment? What does that look like? It looks like uh, millions of events that get rationalized down to cases. And these cases provide you with the ability to manage and res resolve root cause problems that would get lumped together in order to find common remediation points. That if you address some of these items, critical items, they will allow you to address the upstream chain of events from uh, pure events themselves, keeping the noise down to the very, very important and contextualized indicators. And th these indicators then get grouped 
uh, in the remediation process to provide you with foundational playbooks that you need to resolve in order to address that chain. This, again, is something that is available today and that you have the ability to uh, gain insight and control over your environment. So, so ask yourself these questions. As you're handling your environment, as you're looking at how you currently manage these assets or processes, who's responsible, who's involved, when was the last time the incident response plan was updated? Are there the right people there? Are there the right assets? Do we have a process for the industrial environment or the OT environment? What are the um, current uh, tool sets that are being used? Do you have a SOC? Is it involved? Do they know what to do? Are they able to speak with the plant or with the factory or uh, you know, the asset owners? Um, who owns the risk? Is it under the CISO? Is it under someone else? Um, are there currently partners in the ecosystem that take care of part of this of this journey, how are they supervised? How do you manage that, that conversation? So one of the big questions that I often hear is, if I don't know what I have, how can I challenge the vendors I work with? And this is a great question. It's about taking back control of your environment. Properly understanding that every investment that you make in your security stack should be additive and should be augmentative to your plan and your program. And if you're building an OT security program, there are some foundational elements that you want to bring in. Uh, make sure that you're properly tasking the right individuals, teams, processes in order to secure OT, not just as an afterthought, but really as a, as a formal gesture of capturing that risk and being able to address it in the proper way. So we often hear uh, about our, our uh, collaboration with organizations in order for them to measure themselves, situate themselves as to where they live, where they're at in their maturity journey. Um, it is not an easy task. Uh, it requires investment in time, but it does uh, reflect itself in the time that is being spent here is really multiplicated in the value that is obtained with the business. Identifying your risk, quantifying them, keeping it as a continuous process, or even as an assessment helps you identify where you need to start and then helps you design the plan as to where you need to go. And we can certainly help with that. So what are you, what are you focusing on? You're focusing on building an enriched asset inventory for yourself. You really want to obtain not only vulnerabilities, but also dependent risks, um, uh, communication risks. You want to understand your perimeter, where it begins, where it ends who owns the risk for that segment or for those assets. You wanna be able to do attribution very quickly in your remediation process. You wanna make sure that your posture uh, is properly controlled and that you have the ability to assess it in real time if need be, or at the very least punctually in a repeatable fashion um, in, a, in a cost effective way. You wanna have uh, the ability to identify your exposures and these exposures uh, will help you again feed that system of reducing your surface of attack continuously in order to address the risk downstream. And you want to be able to contextually understand that the playbooks that are being presented to you have the ability to um, uh, really make effective change in your environment. So we all understand the manual remediation chain of having to find an incident, build the playbook for it, uh, you know, have it remediated and then it comes back because it wasn't fixed by the SOC or there was no effective mean to um, uh, address it. The process could be heavy, cumbersome. We don't want to patch. Patch is not possible. So there are tools that are available, such as virtually patching your environment, using and leveraging your firewall infrastructure and feeding it the right information in order to immunize the environment against future th uh, threats. So vulnerability is certainly a very good thing to understand, but risk is not always tied to vulnerability and vulnerability doesn't mean necessarily high impact. You have to be able to contextualize it in order to uh, find the proper way to mitigate it as well as the level of effort and criticality. So how do we work? So we capture the entire environment that uh, an organization would have. And we capture everything. And this is done through traditional 
you know, network gathering means through a span or an appliance that's deployed in the environment. And it integrates with uh, natively with all these solutions from firewalls and endpoints, uh, network monitoring devices, including IDS that would have been deployed to the OT environment. But also uniquely, we integrate with the entire industrial arch uh, infrastructure. So from EMS to DCS to SCADA to uh, management infrastructure on the OT side, we're able to integrate and natively speak the same protocols as well as ingest the information that they keep either in their configurations, project files, and so on. And this creates a full picture of the environment. And when they'll match our own research and proprietary uh, threat database in order to find the issues, but uniquely, what we do is we generate a digital twin of the environment, which is a virtual model of the entire environment and helps us be able to manipulate this environment with zero disruption to the real environment. And this allows us to quickly find vulnerabilities, exposure, surface of attack, misconfigurations in the firewalls, policy gaps, and so on and so on. And this creates a new model of your uh, risk posture in order to be able to apply different threat models to it. There are multiple clients that are going to benefit within an organization from knowing that you can do risk evaluation modeling, attack graphing modeling, compliance and policies, policies that you could have set for your business, um, insights that are generated, which are recommendations. Uh, these is, this is where the mitigation playbooks will live in order to inform your mitigation process or your mediation partner on how to contextually and very clearly take actions to resolve these issues. We, of course, collaborate with the ICS attack Mitre, uh, as well as do on the fly segmentation, segmentation assessment based on uh, analysis of the firewall, the routing and network architecture and infrastructure. Uh, and of course, we do impact analysis. All of these things are things that should be available considering the generation of products that we have today. And it's more about creating awareness and education around the fact that these tool sets are available for uh, consumption in order to enhance our response capabilities for uh, OT security. There's multiple data sources that yield multiple results based on what you're actually able to capture. And you're no longer just dependent on the traditional methods of passive network monitoring or active querying. Uh, you're able to integrate to the entire environment and therefore capture all the relevant information required in order to protect the OT environment. A number of different integrations are done across. We are agnostic in our approach. Uh, this is purely an example, but we work with uh, many of the players in this space, both on the IT and OT side. Again, for the purpose of modularly being able to integrate with everyone in order to better uh, address the risk to OT environments. There is a convert SOC model. So if you have an existing SOC, there are many things that can be gathered from the platform to enhance your SOC response process, as well as your capability to ingest this information and make it part of your existing process, as well as your existing SIM or SOAR uh, that would already be deployed at the corporate layer or the IT layer, and therefore helps to optimize those, those uh, remediation processes and gain a huge amount of context to be fed. So a clear integration of value being brought to the OT environment and really talking about an OT SOC or a converged SOC. Three foundational products live within um, Atroyo's um, uh, portfolio, the continuous uh, 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 management and, and uh, risk management for your, your environment. Uh, the second one being the punctual assessment of the environment and managing supply chain and risk can also measure against compliance um, as well as remote connectivity. So secure remote access to the sites in order to centralize and control who has the ability to access your environment under a zero trust model, you're able to never have direct connection to the environment, but always have a proxy in between. Uh, and all of these platforms are either cloud-based or on-premise, fully hybridized. All deployment scenarios are um, uh, sustained. And there is a, a, a full-fledged services arm to Atorio where you have uh, industrial services capabilities from assessments to uh, penetration testing, red teaming, advisory, CISO for a day. There are multiple services. We live in industrial environments and understand uh, the risk dynamics as well as the services that are required to accompany uh, both our partners as well as our end users. 
Lastly, I would want to say that we have support not only for the manufacturing environment, but also for OEMs that are in the manufacturing space. Being able to understand what machines are vulnerable and how to remediate them and provide services to their own clients and so on is, some, is a use case that is often leveraged from our platform sets to be able to enhance the security upstream and downstream from the uh, FAP and SAP process. As a summary, I would want to thank everyone for your time and attention. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I hope this was informative.